Now, if we were to take Jesus' words in today's gospel literally, two things would happen. First, we would have to stop right where we are and leave the chapel and go to be reconciled with all those who are in difficult relations with us. And you'd have to put your television on hold or your computer on hold and maybe do the same thing, huh? Jesus is quite clear. He says, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift at the altar, go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. So, well, maybe we could get Father Greg to come in and finish this Mass because I have to go, and I might not be the only one, huh? Maybe we all have to go, or at least some of us. And then when could we come back? In an hour? Later today? Tomorrow, next week, next month? How long would it take us to be reconciled with those who have something against us? The second thing that would happen if we were to take Jesus' words literally would be that probably all of us would look like pirates. Pirates, yes, pirates. A peg leg, a hook for a hand, a patch over one eye. Doesn't Jesus say, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away? And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. Well, matey, looks like pirates we are, huh? Well, if we're not going to take Jesus' words literally, we have to take Jesus' words in the gospel today seriously. His words are an alarm used to waken our faith, insisting that we pay attention to things so familiar to us that we might dismiss or brush them aside if we even notice them. We are still in the fifth chapter of Matthew's Gospel where Jesus is delivering his first sermon speaking from the Mount. But whereas Jesus began with his beloved and comforting Beatitudes, he now moves to a more stringent moral teaching. His beautiful blessings give way to a series of sharp antitheses, contrasts that are framed as, you have heard it was said of old, but I say to you. With these words, Jesus sets up four case studies, murder, lust, divorce, and integrity of speech. In each case, Jesus contrasts an earlier way with his new way. He intensifies the meaning of the Torah's command, increasing its demand and its expectation. Jesus is presented by Matthew as a kind of new Moses. Just as Moses had to go up the mountain to receive the commandments from God, so Jesus ascends a mountain to give the new commandments. But in fact, the commandments he gives are not new, but rather a transformation of the Mosaic law, not abolishing it, but rather intensifying it. Again and again, Jesus repeats some stricture from the Mosaic law, which was already difficult to fulfill, and he makes it even more demanding. The prohibition against murder is enlarged to embrace anger. The prohibition against adultery is extended to include lust. The prohibition against divorce warns of the probability of adultery. And the prohibition against swearing false oath is applied to all forms of speaking, calling for integrity in everything that is said. In this teaching, we move from the external action to the interior motive, from how someone acts to a consideration of their inner dispositions. Jesus gives us not a new list of rules, but the true intent of the law. He did not come to abolish the Torah, but to fulfill it. Not only behaviors, but also attitudes and inclinations become important ethical concerns. Anger left unchecked has de facto murder as its outcome, and lust is as unholy and dehumanizing as adultery. The righteousness that the kingdom of God requires covers not only overt behavior, but also inner motive. Now, most of us are probably content if we can just avoid doing bad things, but Jesus raises the bar. He demands that we attempt to make even our feelings, our inward dispositions, align with his teaching. Again, the wonderful scripture commentator, Sister Barbara Reed, puts it so poetically in words we can all relate to. She writes, it begins with the tiniest gesture, an interested glance, the brush of a hand, 
Lifelong love builds from a little expressions of care before it becomes total self-surrender to the beloved. At the opposite end of the spectrum, egregious acts of murder, betrayal, rejection, and deception begin with little sparks of anger, white lies, lustful looks. In today's gospel, Jesus instructs us to watch out for the little things that undermine both our relationships and our integrity. He alerts his followers that little slights left unchecked can lead to major offenses with dire consequences. Small steps, baby steps, that slowly but with increasing momentum carry us towards or away from life. In our first reading today, taken from the wisdom tradition of the Holy Scriptures, of the Hebrew Scriptures, we heard that God sets forth for Israel a way of life, but God allows Israel to choose to follow this way or not. It said, if you choose, you can keep the commandments that God has set before you, fire and water, to whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil, Whichever he chooses will be given to him. In the same way, Jesus teaches us today that the choices each of us makes in life, even the seemingly minor ones, can bring us closer to the kingdom or turn us on a path that takes us further and further away. It's a matter of choice. Choose life.